I would like to introduce Marty Cormond. It's a, it's a great honor to, to have you with us today, Marty. Uh, Marty was born in Barcelona and now lives and works in Brooklyn. He creates uh, hyper-realistic works and trompe l'oeil where reality coexists with the artificial. This is the definition of his work. And he showcased his work all over the world from Madrid to New York. And just to mention, there is a forthcoming exhibition called 2020, curated by Richard Klein at Aldrich Contemporary Art Museum in Richfield, Connecticut. So uh, welcome, Marty. We are not going to have just a, as, a, as with the, um, John before, we're just going to have a, an informal conversation about your work and your ideas about, especially about the environment, but not just about that. So just before we start entering into uh, the more pressing issues, let's say, can you give us a bit of a, an overview of your work and your artistic background, please? Yeah, well, it's, uh, oh, I see that piece here. It's always yeah. Uh, yeah, difficult to talk about your work, but uh, one thing I can say, I would like to, maybe I can resume in this, uh, like imagine a case where you, it's late at night, you are going, you know, you are talking to your friends or to your partner, you're very tired and you like, it's a mix between the dreams and, and the reality. Like, let's say it happens to me at least where like you're having a conversation with your partner and then finally a word from your dreams comes to that conversation. So it's basically that moment where inconscient and consciousness are meeting each other. That's when I'm, I'm always like, walking on, no? so to say. Um, and I think my work walks on that, and that uh, thin line between consciousness or, or, or even abstraction and, and figurative, uh, and, and, uh, and that will resume a little, many of the work, you know? And then of course, each piece has its own subject. That one, for example, pencil to eraser, uh, it was to me a way to express who has to write an erase history, for example, no, or who, why, um, uh, which amendments are changed for who, at which moment, you know, these, all these questions are coming to, you know, that one, for example. So, yeah, that is, uh, I, I want to show that box because it's something that we probably will talk later, but it's a way to show that you can release a piece with little packaging. And I think this is something that I, I leave it here. We can talk later if you want, Giacomo. Of but, course, yeah, uh, thanks. Very important to me. Really fascinating, the, 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 the packaging of the, of the artwork. Very, very interesting. Um, like a, a, big, a big piece because the displacement was big. It's in a very small box uh, that they sent to the museum in one day. Indeed, fantastic. So it tells us also something about, you know, how we can actually make things smaller and uh, less, uh, occupy less space, let's say. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Can you, Matthew, can you go on to get to the other piece, this one? Can you talk yeah, a little bit about... More, yeah, that one is even more radical on that sense we're talking about just you, uh, which is, in this case, I did a piece component of 15, 15 posters, uh, each one painted uh, on like on a traditional way, in, like oil paint, like like uh, uh, you know, it's, it's each each piece is a painting, and each piece is a frame of the construction of the house of uh, cars, you know, which was a way to express, as all we know, the fragility of uh, the democracy, you know, that we are all, all, always facing in any country. And then in this case, I show how I send the piece in the mail and who arrived in the museum, which, you know, with all the, and, and was the way, because in, in, at least in the United States, the last elections, the voting via mail, because COVID uh, times was uh, an important subject on the table. And then all the, the, the museum were, were very happy because they don't have to pay transport in this case. <laughs> so I just sent each day one postcard, uh, during 15 days until they have all the peace on the other side. All, all beaten, like you see, but it's part of the process and I like it, you know. Exactly. So, Matthew, Matthew, can you, can you uh, go to, yeah, so this is actually... Yeah, that's the piece, exactly. And that's how I will send it. So yeah. I did, uh, yeah, exactly. 
Fantastic. <laughs> no, it was so, it was nice to see who who was the like the machine was a better painter than myself, probably. You know, <laughs> so it's, it was a good a good combination. You know? Fantastic. Yes. Also, there is the physical um, action of uh, using the mail of you know of putting these into a box that magically will bring them back to the to, to make them appear inside the museum. Is there is a, something quite quite interesting in that process as well, you know? Yeah, and of course there is there is my of course my hand first, but then the the post uh, the office uh, machine where like you know you print the mark of that it's been through the date and all that. It was part of that painting, like a really it, it was a better painting, I think, <laughs> at the end with after the machine uh, print, you know, uh, all that. So and yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, so you 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 mentioned COVID, and so obviously I'm going to ask you something that I also asked to John before about about the role of the artist in a time of crisis like this. I think the the role of the artist is probably uh, to stay still on the practice of being an artist. Not, uh, of course, each artist has its own situation. I will say first that, no, and then. This, um, you know, we all, most of artists, we have side jobs. It's a real, it's a reality. There's always talk about the very small, like like with actors, no? We always talk about the very small percentage of artists who they make a living and even they profit a lot, but the reality is another, no? And then all these, there's many artists who lost their jobs, uh, but this, and, and then, you know, they have had the situation. That was not my case, but it's true that, Many they keep practicing them, them you know, the practice as artists, you know, and that was, a, and I think it's good, probably that it's a thing that you can do at home. It's a very important thing. In our case, was was a good thing, you know, and the positive side into a very difficult situation is that um, you have a quite a real long, quiet time. <laughs> many hours, uh, you know, in the studio and or, or at home or in your basement or whatever people says, no? Um, the true, the, what I think is that COVID, as much as it, it did show uh, in society uh, inequality strongly, it's the same for artists. I think um, you can see, for example, I get, for instance, no, like uh, the, the, the biggest galleries in the art world did extremely well selling online. While I would say the middle galleries and the ones that are maybe less powerful, they struggled because they couldn't afford, at least in New York, eh, I'm talking about, they couldn't afford them rents uh, that are too high related to the sales because the collectors, they tend to go to safer place when there is crisis. And finally, what they do is they buy work that are already established. So that's that already creates a huge disparity among most of the artists, maybe 80, 90 percent of the artists, and the little group that always keep, keeps doing good and better. Really, really yeah. fascinating, Marty. I think you know there is a strong connection here between, let's say, uh, sustainability and the ability also to uh, to have a way to balance. You know the 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 uh, you know our the way we we actually engage with the natural world as well. So I think you know because of COVID, the impact was on everyone, but not and the, some people got hit much more than others. And I think you know it kind of works the same with climate change and with environmental crisis we are living. So I was wondering if you can say something more about that, about the role of the environment in your work, and especially for instance we are seeing here some of the pieces from your project offside if you and uh, it's fascinating here because you combine natural elements with uh, sort of insertion of uh, something that is um, handmade man-made and uh, sort of uh, create a, a very sharp uh, discrepancy in between the two between the two words let's say i i think uh, here the natural um Im images or, or natural environment that they choose, 
they it, I, I use them to explore abstraction finally, you know? So to me, it's like the skills that relates to the moment probably because those days when I was doing that, climate discussion was very strong as now, no? but at some point I started being very strong. I think it was around those years that the helped me to find finally this, this to like one layer is yes, to, to talk about what's, what's in your context no? at the moment, but the other element or, or layer is what's your own, you know, poetic discussion with yourself, no? which in my case is this always, this tension between artificial and natural, or, or like a, in this case, yeah, it's an iceberg, so it's, it's clear what symbolized for all of us, you no know, iceberg, but then those elements that it's a disruption or, or it's helping the ice not to melt, you know, it's, it's I like that to this, you know, that to very contrary, uh, possibilities, for example, no? um, because what we do as humans, we do, what we do, good or bad, is, is, is uh, like I know that we are on the black and white relationship, but it's always what seems that you helping somebody, it could be the opposite. And with, with being in conscious of that, no? Absolutely fascinating. Uh, can you move on, Matthew? Just with, we're gonna have a look at this other piece, which is really, Interesting. As I was wondering, what what is the idea behind this one? It uh, seems like a uh, really it's really thought provoking. That that one was just it's it's it's, it's, it's uh, again artificial and natural approach. I did. It's like this is the first uh, the first painting of a serial. Yeah, exactly. And then I I, I was trying to bring. It's, the, it's, it's a little dark one finally because it's getting it's, you know it's from day to night so it's getting dark at the same time the 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 mountain I, the, the little Iceland is disappearing but it's disappearing through a, a, a form that it's 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 artificial no? it's it's human it's human approach no it's it's um, it's geometrical and and I I don't know like I, I found this this uh, and and that Iceland is in in Ibiza, so it's in, in near, you know, not far from where I am. So, and I, I think I, I missed the last one. The last one was uh, dark. <laughs> so, night, that's it. So. We, we didn't get, uh, I didn't get that one, but anyway, it was dark, so we got the, the final one. So, is that the last, the last image here? I put this one because I found it really powerful. I found it really, apart from that, from the impressive technical, um, skillfulness that reveals, but it, it's just a, it's just very, you know, it's suggestive. It's just with just that element of the parrot kind of change completely the the perspective of these images. So can you can you give us a bit more of a your your thoughts about? I remember here was uh, one, yeah, just to put a parrot on a like it's impossible, no? So as we know, we can imagine. Unless we create uh, uh, maybe a robot parrot, maybe it's possible nowadays. Um, but it's I, definitely I remember, an animal out of place. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's an animal, but out of place to me. I remember I was thinking about yes, it's the the relate to the environmental or climate change discussion. But there was a layer here about immigration. That uh, so when you you know change you you which finally comes to climate change too, you know, like the displacement of people through uh, climate change relate, the, or even like moving from one, one country to another, like myself, which is not for, for, it's for, it's, it's more privileged situation, which, because it's my decision to do it. It's not like I have to do it. So in this case, I, I, uh, I was approaching these two, subjects matters that are somehow links sometimes but are it's it's what happened when you are displaced to a whole different context that's very different from you and and in my case i know i know you know american society we all are exposed to somehow in movies and cultural for sure but at the same time when you come here you realize how different we are too no and and, and the same Way, you know, like it's it's a, so it's it's both, you know, this this layer, two layers at least here. Yeah. 
for this. Um, Fantastic, really fascinating. We, we, are, we are the parrot. <laughs> <laughs> we are the parrot. I'm definitely the parrot. I've been living abroad, you know, far away from home for, for almost 10 years now. So I completely understand and really share mm. your thoughts about, you know, this feeling of displacement, this feeling of loss as well. You know, it's remember, a new life, but it's also something very, you know, you gain something and you lose something every time you move from a place to another. Yeah. Exactly. I remember the, the, the song, We Are the Wolf, no? so we should sing now, We Are the Parrot, in, in, <laughs> in new, new moments. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay, Marty, that was really fascinating. I mean, if, you want, if there is anything else you want to add, I mean, about the, the work and environment, um, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll just have I a... Think, no, tell, yeah, please, go well, ahead. One thing, Giacomo, I, I like, relate to this um, idea that I commit something I always... Like New York, you know, New York, I'm going to put New York because I'm here, you know, like, and, and it's what I know now. It's, it's very, you know, it's, it's very capitalist driven. It's very expensive. So the artists are more and more challenging to make it uh, work because, of course, you need, a, you know, a job to make a living, but uh, art practice needs a studio. It's, it's, all, it's all complex, you know, and... and and then what happened, uh, then there is a group where, you know, are very privileged. Education creates already, a, like, let's say, if, if as a society, the, the work uh, speaks for the society, but there is only a very small group who have the privilege in terms of education to reach those, um, you know, higher education and finally reach influence places and then galleries and then, you know, all expose. So finally we are only seeing a very small portion of what we should be seeing. And normally are white uh, males, I would say, you know, females and males, but mostly. So it's, uh, it's problematic, I think, because finally the discourse is very, is, is, is very poor. Absolutely. Um, Limitated, not very limited. So Absolutely. that's that's yeah. Very much. Yeah, I think I think yes. That's a, that's another very very important aspect of you know our uh, you know th this crisis has sort of brought to the surface so many instances of inequality and and, and that that kind of the, the situation now seems to be it. We see these things much more. Let's say. Than before because they they appear all in, in all their darkness and 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 also the 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 the, the, the their aspect the more dark aspect I say of, of our society appear very clearly when when you you you're you're living through a crisis really so yes I think absolutely again, no and, and I think yeah I think when um like let's found like, like an ideal place will be where Education is more accessible to more people, means automatically a more diverse uh, thinking, and then a richer uh, scene of the art, no, or, or culture in general, no? and and I think that will be, uh, to me, a better place. Which I don't think capitalist as we have it now, it's it's like it's 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 not it's getting less and less possible. Um, Absolutely. That's that's yeah. that's actually that's a very important uh, question. That's a very important issue, especially for classics and classical archaeology. It's something that really, uh, I mean, we, we we should really remember these words. So I I would just like to thank you again for for sharing your thoughts with us with us and your work, which was fantastic. And uh, obviously we'll be in touch. Uh, 